Now let's continue this conversation with what uh, Mr. Femi Falano outrightly said. He says, and I quote, the constitution has been amended to vest all funds due to the judicial arm of the National Judicial Council. This is the governing body of the judiciary. It should be allowed to assess all the needs of the judiciary, including housing, present its budget to the National Assembly and be directly allocated its funds to carry out its programs. So, I mean, I'm asking... If, it's, if this is the way it has been handled before now, and we continue to say judicial officers need better welfare, they need better houses, they need better cars, is there anything wrong in tweaking this and doing it the other way? Well, if um, the, you know, when, for example, budgets are sent from the federal government to the three arms, it is not personally, President the president, Bola Tinubu, that is sending it, is the government. Mm. Now, if I remember at a time the Lagos State Governor purchased vehicles, Prado, for judges and some vehicles for the magistrate. When I later found out, there are arrangements on how you can pay back. You have to pay back. So it's like announcing a lease purchase for them. But we are saying that the court can do this by themselves. They have money budgeted for them. Even though um, it's not enough, okay. the judiciary should be able to, you know, review their own salary. But it takes the, uh, this arm of the executive, what's the name, that handles salary, FAC, F-A-C, FAC, that handles salary, um, for both the president and other persons in the government. So it takes, I bet are, it's an arm of the executives to decide salary for the judiciary. Judiciary ought to be independent enough, like the executive. They decide how to pay themselves through that um, a committee. But what about the judiciary? If they are independent, they should be able to review. They shouldn't wait for the executive to review their salary. If they think they are supposed to be well paid. They should go about it. If they think the judges need vehicles and other things, they should do it. But you see, judges cannot complain, except if your friends, your mates are judges, and maybe in your private hours, you will talk, and they say, oh, we are really suffering. You know, that's when you can appreciate what they are going through. They can't complain in the court. Yeah. They can't complain outwardly. I know they have a public relations department, but it's so docile and quiet, as if it's non-existent. So, um, um, the, what you call the tweak, no, uh, it is not proper. The fact that it has been done and um, allowed does not mean that it was proper. Mm. So I, I, there I, are those who have said this would promote uh, judicial autonomy. If the executive decide to give gifts. Yes. No. Look, who do we usually take to court more among the arms? Executive. The executives. So if the executive, uh, it's unfortunate that judiciary will have to rely on the executive to execute their judgment. Because if there is a judgment, it's that you get the police. But in same uh, countries, you comply with decision. You obey naturally. You don't need to wait to be forced. The system is so well entrenched that if there is a judgment of the court, immediately those affected complies or you file an appeal. But here, yeah, you go through the process of forcing some persons to obey. Some will obey with impunity. You know, for example, it took a, a, a judgment meant to embarrass because the judge would know at the back of his mind that you cannot arrest the, uh, the Inspector General of Police. You cannot arrest the chairman of EFCC. But he gave that order, and then it was widely published. At least they were embarrassed. You know, they were embarrassed. But they ought to be arrested in the same country. They ought to be arrested. If there's an order to arrest the Inspector General of Police, it should be arrested. But here, he doesn't care. But you notice that when it was published, the chairman of EFC had to come forward to explain. The Inspector General of Police started explaining. You understand? So, um, they don't have the ability to execute their judgment. They rely on the executives to execute their judgment. That is right. something I think we should address in the future. But if that same executive, call it tweak, call it appreciation, or call it whatever, is now the one buying properties for the judges, it's not good. 
All right. We'll talk about the EFCC in a minute. But, you know, the president is very particular about judges' uh, welfare and independence of the judiciary. What other areas must he now look into? The independence, even though there's a provision in the Constitution for it, has not been properly executed. Independence of the judiciary? Yes, it's not. It has not. Judiciary are still more or less under the executive, which is wrong. I think we should address that area very well. You, you, I mean, it may be very important for you to expatiate. Yes. For instance, it takes the executive to confirm the appointment of a judicial officer. The judiciary will say, oh, yes, this is the person we want to hold this position through NGC. But the constitution says you must wait for the executive to confirm it. Among the arms, the executive is most powerful. Because even the, uh, what do you call it, for the legislature, once the, uh, a new set comes in, it takes the president to inaugurate them before they start functioning. So you see, we must look for a way to get the judiciary on its own to appoint its officer, confirm the appointment. But that will require constitutional amendment. Mm -hmm. But that is one side. The other side is that payment of salary. The salary, and that is why people like us, with due respect, we, en we don't envy them because we know what they are going through. But we want to encourage them because it is a um, national service. But we, they need to be appreciated. They need to enjoy payment equivalent to the impute they are making in the judicial service to the country. They are not being paid like that. Uh, I am aware that the president, shortly after his resumption in his office, made uh, allusion to the fact that he's going to look at uh, improving the package of um, um, judicial personnel. The president is not supposed to be saying that judicial personnel, if they are independent, they should improve the packages, improve their own welfare by themselves. How? They receive money. Calculate budget how much you need. Right from the allocation committee, uh, 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 from when the budget is presented, you have your own take to take care of yourself, appoint yourself if you feel you need It's like my company. Mm. I don't need an outsider to come and tell me if my staff is doing well, if he has put in some moons, I should uh, appreciate, I should increase the salary. It is left for me. I shouldn't be re relying on another company or somebody else. So the charity should be properly and effectively independent in all ramification. So the, this president will be laying a positive legacy if you can enhance that. Now, listen, I am saying this president, which is an executive, will lay by enhancing this. So it will take the executive to properly allow the, uh, you know, a total independence of the judiciary. It's not supposed to be like that. Mm. Legislature, to a reasonable extent, is independent. It's just that the officers are working in collaboration with the president, and there's nothing wrong with that. So are these the same factors affecting... Uh, the administration of uh, justice or criminal justice in Nigeria? Yes. Criminal justice, both the executive and the judiciary and the legislature are doing their best to improve. Okay. The Criminal Justice Act is meant to fast track criminal trial. It's just that sometimes you still suffer it, like if um, a judge is transferred while hearing a matter. The practice is that, the law is that you come back before another judge, you are likely to start all over okay. again. Yeah. Or you wait for the previous judge to get what we call a fiat, to come and continue to hear the matter wherever she is, either she will come back. And all that requires for logistics, which might not be there. And it depends on what the judge is going to mean. So all that, I, I think there is a, a provision in the Administration of Criminal Justice Act that now allows you to adopt what has been done before. And that is calculated to speed up a uh, criminal trial. You know, but there are cases where you see a case of stealing. The person and the uh, maximum punishment is three years. The person is in on remand just because they are waiting for bail. And then we have seen that there is a provision to enhance easy bail that has not been exploited. Mm. Yes, you can set up like what we have abroad. Maybe they, that is a well-organized crime where everybody's identity is easy to locate any person. Mm. Uh, once you are arrested, the 
bonders, uh, they come and take you on bail. So it boils down to data. Yes. Uh. But here we don't have that. So we have a lot of persons parading themselves as uh, professional shorties. So, and you have a lot of people in detention that are not supposed, in prison, that are not supposed to be there, mm -hmm. that are going through trial. You know, so um, it would take the joint collaboration of judges, magistrate, executive, judiciary generally, and the legislature to speed up the implementation of the provision in the administration of the Criminal Justice Act. All right, let, let's talk about other matters. Uh, President Tinubu's fight against corruption, because it was just days ago the Supreme Court uh, dismissed, uh, dismissed the governor's suit against TFCC, ICPC, NFIU's powers to fight uh, financial crimes in Nigeria. Did that really surprise you? No, I, we, we already said that, really, that would likely be the judgment, mm. because the EFCC... It's not even a case to begin with. Well, the governors passed... Um, are being alleged to have um, corruptly enriched themselves, stolen government money. They are trying, you know, government will fight back. Mm. Now, that goes to the credit to the, of the president, no matter what any person says. Let me tell you something. The EFCC cannot arrest a governor without first informing Maybe the Office of the National Security, the Attorney General, or the President. Okay. It's like if you are a very important personnel and you are alleged to have committed a crime, it depends on how important you are. The law does not respect nobody, but mm -hmm. the CP, the Commissioner of Police of the State, will be aware that they want to go and arrest such person. He might approve it. Without his approval, it cannot be done. So for them to be arresting governor is it's a clear language from the president that you are your own mm. if you commit go and face it mm. unlike those days if you commit one way or the other um they will just ask the fcc to let you go um at, at the time the fcc was being used for political winch hunting and all that but currently the current chairman of the efcc have come out to say that he has power to do his job without any hindrance so the fight against corruption, corruption will definitely fight back. So I was not surprised with the suit, but I was impressed with the judgment that, of course, EFCC is founded, is created by law. Same thing with ICPC. So I have studied the law, uh, the extant laws. How can you fault it? I've studied, maybe. So I was eager. I was curious. I was waiting for the judgment. But I was not surprised because I didn't see anything in the processes filed that would justify a judgment that the mm -hmm. EFCC is still legal. But those who have uh, continued to question the power of EFCC to investigate state finances have held on to the doctrine of federalism to argue that each tier of government is expected to govern its own affairs. The police can go anywhere to arrest. The okay. EFCC is like the police. Do you have any state EFCC? We don't. And a crime is a crime, irrespective of where and how it is committed. Mm. The only issue I have is the duplicity of the duties of the EFCC mm. and the police. Okay. Why the EFCC have more technical approach to investigation? They have power. They can get the bank to give them statement. You know? So the police have serious issues to contend with. Mm. The personnel, most of them are not happy. Their welfare is undermined. They have to use money to buy things. Some of them, their boxes are waiting for them to submit cash reports. Mm. So that is the police side. That is the problem. And then where the current IG is trying, but that is what he inherited, and it has not been stopped. Mm. But the EFCC is different. From here, they can trace a phone, they can trace your contact, they can check your details, they can check bank uh, accounts, they can see how money has moved. So no matter how much you try to hide, they have the expertise, they can do forensic investigations easily. So the EFCC have the jurisdiction, national jurisdiction to investigate any matter. But, but has the commission lived up to expectations? Well... To some extent, yes. 
At least I know some persons who I don't want to mention who are very, very intelligent and are doing so well under the EFC. Mm. I know some that have handled cases, have unraveled a theft of millions of uh, Naira. So, Mr. Daniel, so, the basis of that question is, if after 20 years, uh, Nigeria is still a highly corrupt nation, what then is the problem? Is it about the commission or that we have I an mean, increasing number of highly corrupt individuals in the country? Impunity on the part of government and some private persons who are highly connected to government. Okay. I've handled cases where the police will invite a suspect. And an ex-IG will call that police. I had I invited my friend. Is that not the end of the matter? That's the end. We have to look for extra-legal way to arrest that suspect. And when he called ex- way. Yes. Which should be what? No, no. We don't need to disclose this. Mm. Okay. For example, uh, you need a, a court order to arrest somebody. If the court grants that order, it is the court that can withdraw it. Mm. The IG cannot withdraw it. So you can comply with the court order to arrest somebody. That is one of the ways. If they are investigating, you can't detain somebody for more than 24 hours or maximum 48 hours, particularly where you arrested the person is close to a court of competent jurisdiction. Mm. So to keep the person, because you need the person to enhance your investigation, you get what you call remand warrant. You go to court, argue, this person we've just arrested, we need him to stay five days. We need this order because if we don't get this order, it will be illegal to keep this person for more than so so period. The court grants you the order. You keep the person. So you're saying the, the commission is not a problem? The commission... Is not the problem. The commission is not the problem. The impunity on the part of government functionaries okay. and the belief that nothing can happen and the porosity of our borders for them to, or an airport for them to travel without being detected. So all these put together could uh, constitute factors that we, you know, stall the progress of the commission. But despite this, I think the commission is doing well. Mm. So, I mean, but then how do we begin to address the gaps in Nigeria's fight against corruption? And can we ever defeat corruption in this country? It's so difficult to defeat corruption anywhere, not only in Nigeria. In the Nigerian case, the level of abject poverty generally is making parents who are supposed to owe, because the first society, the first part of the society is the family. Okay. But what we have here in Nigeria is that family celebrate wealth without questioning the source. I was going to talk about our value system. Good. And then family compares. Look at you. you look at your mates. Look at what he's doing for the parents. Nobody bothered to ask. The kings will even give shifting title to mm. such person without bothering to ask. Whereas that is supposed to be a meritorious award in a traditional way, recognizing um, successful uh, contribution to the growth of the society. Then you want to appreciate the person with the title. But yeah, no, the ISB that gets the title. So it, it, the family institution is the first point of blame. The other one is we don't have proper data and record profiles of, of Nigerians. We don't. We have the... Um, uh, what do you call this? Uh, I've forgotten the name. That keep records of persons of Nigerians. Ask them that we are looking for social person. You have to start going to social media, Facebook to trace the person. We are supposed to have record. Almost everybody have NIN, and we thought with that it will reduce crime rate. It has not. Almost every person has a bank account. Almost every person finished primary school, secondary school. So where are these data? Where are they being kept? 
How do you trick somebody? No. As part, we have to take the telephone and start tracking. We have to look for somebody that will check you out on social media and look for a way to reach you. No, no, no. We need to go, but really quickly. So fast uh, we are going. Thinking, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> do you think in fighting corruption, uh, the urgent passage of a whistleblower law would help? It assisted a lot. Don't forget the dollar cash that was recovered from a residence in Ikoi. It was a whistleblower. Don't forget the cash. Is it not in Kaduna? By somebody who was with NMPC. It's a whistleblower. Mm -hmm. But I don't know whether they have executed this well because I've not been hearing a lot of whistleblowing again recently. Because it was just recently the Attorney General of the Federation uh, and the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission called for the urgent passage of this law. Well, sadly, we have to go. Mr. Daniel, thank you so much for joining us on the program. It's always a pleasure having you on the program. Thank, thank you, you so much. much. Uh, Mr. Tony Daniel is a lawyer and political affairs analyst. Thank you so much thank once you, again. Madam. Thank you so much.